With its futuristic design and out-of-this-world specs, Cybertruck has ignited the imagination of millions worldwide. Thousands of videos have been made, over 1.7 million pre-orders have been placed, and we're all waiting with bated breath for deliveries to start later this year. But what really set my imagination on fire is Cybertruck's ability to cross bodies of water. If you ever wondered how a huge truck can float and how Cybertruck will propel itself in water, stay tuned, as in this video we'll explore the unique engineering behind Cybertruck's amphibious capabilities. So buckle up and get ready as we peek into this mighty machine of disruption. Ever since I saw Cybertruck, it caught hold of my imagination and it never let go. Everything about it defies convention. And nothing says form follows function more than its stainless steel exoskeleton, truss-shaped design. But if that wasn't unique enough, on 4-20-2020, Elon dropped a bombshell, saying that it'll even float for a while. A year and a half later, Elon expanded on that, saying that the Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to briefly serve as a boat so it can cross rivers, lakes, and even seas that aren't too choppy. He added that it needs to be able to get from Starbase to South Padre Island, which requires crossing the channel. RGV Aerial Photos then posted a photo of the channel, saying it's 477 meters or 1,565 feet wide. But we can't know how long it would take Cybertruck to cross it without first knowing how fast it could travel. Elon responded and said that you need an electric propeller mounted on the tow hitch to go faster than a few knots. But there might be a creative wheel hub design that can generate meaningful thrust. Having done my previous Cybertruck videos, I already came up with that hub idea myself, and it's something only Cybertruck can do. We'll discuss this later, but I want to be thorough, so let's first check out how Cybertruck floats. To help me get to more people, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. YouTube really likes it when it's done early in the video. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon.com slash ConnectingOdots. Patrons make this channel possible, and hopefully once I get enough patrons, I'll be able to do this full time. Without further ado, let's tackle our first question, which is... How can this monster of a truck float? To answer this question, we need to understand the principle of buoyancy. Do you know the story of how in ancient Greece, Archimedes jumped out of the bathtub shouting Eureka? Seeing the water level rise as he settled into the bathtub led him to discover what we now call Archimedes' Law, which states that bodies float when the weight of the liquid they displace is equal to their own weight. In other words, Cybertruck will be able to float if the weight of the water its shape displaces is greater than or equal to its own weight. If we can calculate the volume of water displaced by Cybertruck, we can determine whether it'll float or sink. To simplify this calculation, let's assume that Cybertruck is a rectangular box, measuring 5.89 meters in length, 2.03 meters in width, 1.91 meters in height, and weighing 2,948 kilograms. This is roughly equivalent to the dimensions and a very conservative estimate of the weight of the original Cybertruck prototype. To find the volume of water that Cybertruck needs to displace so it can float, we will use Archimedes' law. Dividing Cybertruck's weight of 2,948 kilograms by the density of water of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter gives us that the volume Cybertruck needs to displace is 2.948 cubic meters of water. Next, let's calculate the area of the Cybertruck's floor plan, which will determine how deep it will be submerged in water. The floor plan area is simply the length multiplied by the width of the vehicle. So 5.89 meters times 2.03 meters gives us a floor plan area of 11.94 square meters. Finally, we can calculate the depth to which Cybertruck will be submerged by dividing the volume of water displaced by the floor plan area. Dividing 2.948 cubic meters by 11.94 square meters gives us a submerged depth of 0.25 meters, or about 10 inches. Keep in mind that this calculation assumes that the Cybertruck is a perfect rectangular box, and that the weight is distributed evenly throughout the vehicle. In reality, the shape and distribution of Cybertruck's weight could impact its buoyancy and stability in water. Seriously though, let's be serious for a moment, because saying that Cybertruck can possibly float is far from enough to enable going with it into water. It should also be completely watertight and have enough propulsion to counter possible currents and bring you back to the shore. I said completely watertight because it's not just that Cybertruck should barely leak. Either Cybertruck is completely watertight or it isn't. There's no middle ground because usage in water can be a matter of life or death and should not be taken lightly. In fact, when Elon first tweeted that Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat, the Washington State Department of Natural Resources tweeted back that... Our derelict vessel crews are begging you to understand that anything that serves briefly as a boat should not be used as a boat. I see this as a pretty nasty and snide way to comment on a vehicle that they've never seen or tested, but bottom line, they're right. 
amphibious abilities should be done right or not done at all. With that in mind, let's check whether Cybertruck will leak. But first, let's detour into the story of a car that was all leaks. A car called... Wet Nelly. One of the inspirations for Cybertruck's wedgie design was the wonderful, wonderful Lotus Esprit. The Esprit was a Jajaro designed wedge shaped sports car, which was produced in its original shape for 18 years from 1976 to 1994, before getting a refresh and soldiering for 10 more until 2004. The Esprit famously starred in the James Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me, where during one of the car chases, the car launched off a dock straight into the water. It then turned into a submarine by folding the wheels into their bays, extending fins in their place, and pushing the rear bumper out to reveal a bank of four electrically driven propellers to provide forward propulsion. A prototype submarine was made by a company from Florida, using Esprit body shells. These cars, however, were wet submarines, which means that they filled up with water and were operated by scuba divers. I assume that a wet submarine was chosen because this was much cheaper and faster than strengthening the Esprit to withstand water pressure and making it fully watertight. In addition, there was little motivation to make a dry one, considering that nobody planned to shoot any underwater scenes with the actors sitting inside it. While filming the movie, the submarine was operated by two scuba divers in wetsuits and full breathing gear, one of which was an ex-Navy SEAL called Don Griffin. Strengthening bars on the windows hid the drivers from outside cameras, but throughout the scene, air bubbles from the scuba diver's gear constantly came up from the car, something you wouldn't expect to see from an airtight submarine. Not that this mattered, as moviegoers didn't even notice a much larger fail when the car emerges from the water and Bond opens the window and drops a large fish out. Pretty funny when seen on screen, but if the sub was watertight, how'd the fish get in there? The prototype's nickname was Wet Nelly, and some of you may know that in 2012, Elon Musk purchased it at auction. While doing the research, however, two things about it grabbed my attention. Before branching into software and systems engineering, I started my career as an aerospace engineer, and I've done extensive research in fluid dynamics. So in researching about Wet Nilly, I figuratively smacked my forehead. One point I read was so obvious, yet until bumping into it, nobody, including me, tends to have it in mind. Consider this. The Lotus Esprit was a wedge-shaped sports car, and sports cars are shaped to produce significant downforce that would help glue the car to the road at high speeds. However, this posed a real problem for the car's role as a sub. Water is much denser than air, so even at very low speeds, the car's shape produced huge downforce, which would shove the sub downward towards the bottom. This was eventually solved by fitting the prototype with those fins, which were functional, not just props used to make the prototype look like a sub. The lift they produced was essential to having a non-stationary sub appear in the film. Having designed and analyzed aerodynamic configurations myself for several years, I find this tidbit extremely cool. The second point I found interesting really was a tidbit, and that was that following the film, the sub was put into storage and then forgotten. The storage locker was left unpaid for 10 years, so its contents were put on auction, and a couple who ran a business renting construction tools bought everything, lock, stock, submarine, and barrel for the grand sum of $100. Strangely enough, the couple who bought the contents had never watched a James Bond movie, so had no idea how valuable the weird sports car they found was. The husband planned on fixing the sports car's dented roof and making other improvements. But after they loaded the car onto a truck and set off for home, truckers contacted their truck via CB radio to let them know they were hauling a James Bond car. The couple went on to rent the movie, after which they gave the car a cosmetic restoration and put it on auction, where Elon purchased it for $989,000. After buying the car, Elon told Jalopnik that he had watched the Bond movie as a child. It was amazing as a little kid in South Africa to watch James Bond in The Spy Who Loved Me drive his Lotus Esprit off a pier, press a button, and have it transform into a submarine underwater. I was disappointed to learn that it can't actually transform. What I'm going to do is upgrade it with a Tesla electric powertrain and try to make it transform for real. As far as I know, Elon didn't go through with those plans. But since he already said that Cybertruck was also inspired by the Lotus Esprit, an amphibious Cybertruck could be a way of making yet another childhood dream of his come true. Wet Nelly couldn't serve as a car and had zero usability as a sub, yet it sold for almost a million dollars because it's a piece of art, a part of contemporary culture and only one exists. As with paintings by Warhol or Keith Haring, these things make it a great investment, and chances are that if Elon put it on sale today, it would sell for a much higher price. Last year alone, when stock markets took a big hit and retail investors were down by an average of 30%,
Art prices rose by a cool 29%. I'm a long-term Tesla investor, but to offset short-term falls, such as those we're seeing nowadays with inflation and rising interest rates, asset managers at Goldman Sachs say the ideal allocation for stocks has shrunk from 60% to around 45 They recommend investing the remaining 15% in alternative and real assets, such as fine art, as do Bank of America's head of investment and BlackRock's Larry Fink. For the last 30 years, portfolios that included alternative assets would have had lower volatility and higher returns. And this is one of the reasons why the ultra-wealthy heavily invest in art. Investing in contemporary art used to be a challenge, as even a single asset can sell in the six to nine figure range. However, thanks to Masterworks, the sponsor of this video, retail investors like you and I now have access to these investments, even with much smaller budgets. As seen in this chart, all exits Masterworks did to date were profitable for its investors, with net annual return rates up to 39%. With such returns, Masterworks now has over 645,000 users and has had to acquire and release more art on their platform to meet demand. Offerings sell out in minutes, and new users now need to pass through a waiting list. But that's where I kick in, because the link in the description below skips you ahead of the waiting list. So click the link in the description now and get immediate access to investing in contemporary art. And thank you, Masterworks, for sponsoring this video. Back to Cybertruck. And the question we need to answer is, will Cybertruck leak? We know from previous Teslas that the battery pack and electronics are completely waterproof. But for Cybertruck, the question holds special meaning. If Cybertruck's body is submerged 10 inches into the water, like we previously calculated, this means that the door sills will likely be submerged, and waterproofing these openings is a completely different story than sealing the enclosed battery and electronics. Until Cybertruck hits the streets and possibly the lakes, there's no way to know to which level the doors will be watertight. But it's safe to say that it all depends on what Tesla plans on doing. There are no huge technical hurdles, but it's not a triviality. So it all boils down to whether Tesla wants to go the extra mile and make the doors watertight. Do they? One answer would be that Elon already tweeted that Cybertruck will be the official truck of Mars, so fans usually assume that he wants pressurized versions of Cybertruck to carry astronauts on Mars' surface. While this may be true, there's a big difference between sending several pressurized units to Mars a few years from now and making all Earth-bound Cybertrucks airtight. So while this could be a reason for making the truck watertight, it's not something I'd put my money on. But rumors are only one part of it, because as these Cybertruck pictures that Matthew DR took show, Cybertruck has pretty hefty door seals. Looking at these seals, I think it's safe to assume that Cybertruck's doors will be watertight, and that no water would enter through closed doors. Soft closed doors. And one more thing, if Tesla wants the doors to be watertight, I expect them to have soft closed doors, like Model X's doors and Model S's trunk. In other words, when the driver or passenger shut a door, a motorized latch will pull the door tight and lock it into place at just the right pressure to make it watertight without hurting the seals. It's also possible that there will be a setting for this, where in normal driving the doors are latched shut, but in water mode they're pulled just a bit tighter. Having said that, I am far from certain on this point, as it's also possible to design regular latches that lock the door into place when it's manually shut. Amphibious Propulsion Methods Having calculated that Cybertruck should float with only 10 inches submerged and that the doors seem to be watertight, let's give a brief review of propulsion methods that amphibious vehicles use to progress in water. For each method, I'll show examples of amphibious vehicles using it and give the probability I see of Cybertruck using it. Let's start from slowest to fastest. And the first method is floating. Some amphibious vehicles don't have any means of propulsion. They just float. This isn't interesting. Could be dangerous and clearly isn't for Cybertruck, so let's go on. Wheel rotation or paddle wheels. This method is very straightforward, as all it means is that progress while floating is achieved similar to how it's done on roads. No need for propellers, linkages, or extra engines. Just press the accelerator, the wheels will start turning, and if their bottom part pushes more water backwards than their top part pushes forward, progress is made. In fact, in 2016 and long before Cybertruck, Elon tweeted that Model S can float well enough to be temporarily used as a boat, and that propulsion will be provided via wheel rotation. The main advantage of this method is that it doesn't require any changes to the car, and for this reason it's used in many amphibious vehicles. However, it also has some severe drawbacks. First, using regular road tires will provide very low propulsion, and using tires that are better at pushing water away, such as knobby tires, might limit usability on roads. 
There are tires which provide an acceptable road and water compromise, but even these are highly inefficient. Remember that having low amphibious propulsion is not just a matter of traveling slower. If there are currents or if leaks occur, this could be a matter of life and death. But the biggest factor in the efficiency of such tires is how deep they'll be submerged. While the bottom of the tire pushes water backwards to provide thrust, the top of the tire pushes water forward and counters it. This means that if the tires are small or the car doesn't have enough suspension travel to enable their upper half to be above the water, there won't be any progress. This is often used by using huge tires, as seen with the military-type vehicles currently shown on screen. But again, it's highly inefficient. Surprisingly, Cybertruck has several factors which support wheel rotation for propulsion. The Cybertruck prototype's tires are very knobby, and the air suspension enables it to retract the wheels high up so that their upper part will remain above water level. That being said, I suspect that Cybertruck will keep its wheels entirely submerged. More on this later in the Cyber Hub section. Amphibious Tracks Tracked vehicles have their own version of paddle wheels, where the lower part of the track pushes water backwards, and if the upper part is above the water, then propulsion is achieved. Besides using tracks instead of wheels, this method is just like the paddle wheels method, and since it isn't efficient and isn't applicable to Cybertruck in any way, let's go on. Propellers and Amphibious Screws Water propellers are faster means of propulsion for amphibious cars. Propellers work similar to those on a boat, where one or more propellers move the craft through the water. For example, the ring speed splash uses a retractable screw propulsion system that can be raised and lowered depending on the driving surface, and has a top speed of around 30 miles an hour in water. There are various methods to drive the propellers in amphibious vehicles. Some vehicles power it via the car's main engine. This requires a complex linkage which complicates production and reduces reliability. This simply isn't the Tesla way, so let's move on. Another option is to drive it via a separate engine, usually a marine engine lifted from power boats. Water Car's H1 Panther seen here is an extraordinary example of such a setup. Water Car gained experience in amphibious vehicles, building the $198,000 speed record breaking Water Car Panther. They have now taken their experience to the next level by converting old H1 Hummers into the $465,000 ultra fast amphibious H1 Panther. While retaining all their on road and unbeatable off road capabilities, the addition of a Mercury Marine engine and a large propeller turned the aluminum bodied Hummers into absolutely terrifying water vessels with a top speed of 35 knots or 40 miles an hour. What's interesting about the Hummer is what people don't realize is it's all aluminum, very lightweight, so they can drop right. into helicopters. And yet they use these big, thick frames and the suspension and everything is just ridiculous. So you get them off the frame and they're pretty light. And that's what we've done. We're just using the body and basically the running gear and the frame and all the suspension and all the thick coils, all the heavy shit, right. you know, we discard, we don't use. But the thing is, like a boat, like an airplane, it's all about power and weight. Exactly. Yeah, same thing with our race cars. Yes. Power and weight. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it's absolutely. All right. Back to the Cybertruck, and it should be very possible to retrofit an internal combustion marine engine to the Cybertruck's tailgate. This is extremely against Tesla's mission, and besides, why even bother fitting, refueling, and maintaining a gas engine when Cybertruck provides easy access to loads of electric power? Elon suggested that adding an electric propeller to the tow hitch would be possible, and it appears that non-functional, novelty tow hitch propellers are already a thing. This picture shows a fake marine engine propeller connected to the tow hitch, and here we see a novelty tow hitch electric propeller. Novelty aside, electric propellers are a real thing, whether connected to the tow hitch, the tailgate, or any other way. With Cybertruck providing loads of electrical power, electric powered propellers make so much sense. Water jet. Jet propulsion is the fastest means of propulsion used in amphibious cars. It works by drawing water through an intake and then expelling it out of the back of the vehicle through a nozzle, creating a propulsive force. 
The car on screen is a good example of that. And it's as easy to use electric water jets on Cybertruck as it is with electric propellers. However, I won't keep you waiting, so let's cut to the chase and get to the real deal, which is... Cyberhubs. Now we're talking, because this method is pure genius. What's more, no other amphibious car I know of can use it, but Cybertruck can. I previously said that I thought of this solution myself before Elon said anything about wheel hubs, but it's not that I'm blowing my own horn so you'd think I'm a Tesla-level genius. Far from it. I'm doing this to show that as genius as this solution is, once you know enough on Cybertruck's technology, like I do after making my previous videos, this solution becomes a no-brainer, asked for, and the logical thing to do. First, I want to dispel a possible misconception and clarify that this propulsion method has nothing to do with hubcaps. Regular hubcaps are not nearly strong enough to push the car through water, and it would take a lot of engineering and a lot of expense to create hubcaps strong enough to withstand these forces. This would also mean engineering a new part, or actually two, because each side should mirror the other, creating serial numbers for them and keeping inventories. All that for a feature that few people would ever use. The complexity and costs involved are opposed to how Tesla operates, so if hubcaps were needed, Tesla would just leave them to the aftermarket. However, the best part is no part. The best hubcap is no hubcap, and propulsion would be provided by the wheel itself. Note that Elon said the wheel hub, not hubcap, so hubcap is plain wrong. Back to the wheels, and I said it's a genius solution, and the beauty of it is that it comes at no extra cost. The only thing required from Tesla is to design one of the wheel options a bit different, and the only thing required from you is to choose that wheel option. Once you do that, no need to use special tires, no need to add propellers, no need for electric motors, and definitely no need for marine motors. If you tick that wheel option while specking your truck, then congratulations, my friend, your truck can now swim. I guess I teased you enough, so let's start talking engineering. First, let's discuss the wheels. The wheels. Many wheel designs, such as Tesla's own Uber turbines, provide a turbine effect where when the wheel turns, its spokes act like a fan that sucks air from beneath the car outwards. The main reason for this design is that this air flows over the brake rotors and cools the brakes. Teslas have regenerative braking, so it's not that they need this, but if you're into taking the car on track days or your car isn't a Tesla, cooling the brakes could be important. So the spokes act as a fan, but a fan used underwater is called a propeller. So just specking your truck with these turbine-shaped wheels will give your truck four propellers ready to do their thing every time you push the accelerator in water. Let that sink in. The steering. Chances are that now you raised an eyebrow, because any thrust produced by the right wheel will be cancelled by equal thrust produced in the opposite direction by the left wheel. You're right, and if it was so simple, then all amphibious cars would be using it. And this brings me to the second part of the equation, which is the steering. In my Diamond Steering Cybertruck Technologies video, I predicted that Cybertruck will do everything by wire. Steering and braking should be provided by motors and actuators located at each of the four wheels and actuated by wire which would remove the need for hydraulic lines and actuators and significantly simplify construction. In my Gen 3 Technologies live stream, I expanded this prediction into what I called a dry factory, where besides ditching hydraulic steering and brakes, using a dry electrode process would reduce liquid use even further, so that the only liquids used on the car would be oil for the engine, coolant for the thermal system, and washer fluid for the windscreen. And on Investor's Day, Tesla confirmed both predictions. While I didn't say it explicitly, the unboxed process where cars are assembled in modules implies this. Hydraulic four-wheel steering and brakes introduce a messy bottleneck in assembly once the front and rear modules are integrated together. A bottleneck for connecting hydraulic lines between the front and rear modules, filling them with their respective fluids, topping and possibly bleeding them to remove air bubbles. With by-wire controls, however, all that is needed is to plug in a single connector. So, by-wire controls it is. And although this was described for the Gen 3 platform, Tesla also partly confirmed it for the Cybertruck. Listen to this for a second. And then we assemble the parts of the car once and only once. We put them where they need to go. The interior is ta attached from a bottom up or a top down uh, strategy, so there's more access for those robots and people. We aren't moving heavy objects around and doing nothing to it. And it means we're doing more work on the car more of the time. And then when we take it, all of these tested sub assemblies and we put them together, we finally assemble the car only one time, putting the sides on with all of their parts to a front and rear that was already assembled, carrying the floor in with the seats, and finally boxing it out with the doors one time, just like Cybertruck. So it's just like Cybertruck. 
Regardless of whether or not this confirms that Cybertruck's four-wheel steering is performed by wire, my conviction is high, so I don't need any confirmation. Watch my Cybertruck Technologies video later for details. There's a link in the details below. In the Technologies video, I also showed how by-wire four-wheel steering, where there is a separate digitally controlled steering actuator for each wheel, enables to turn them in pretty bizarre directions, such as that diamond shape which could enable Cybertruck to do tank turns, while Rivian cannot. This capability is exactly what sets Cybertruck apart and enables it to use wheels as propellers. To facilitate explanations, keep commonality with Tesla's current Uber turbine wheels and mostly have some fun. From now on, I will refer to the turbine-shaped wheels as Unter Turbine. However, that's just a made-up name, and Tesla can call them Hydro Turbines, Aqua Turbines, or just option 69B. It's their baby, so they, not I, will do the naming. So Unter Turbines it is. And let's look at this diagram of an all-wheel drive Cybertruck specced with Unter Turbine wheels and floating in water. I'll show this one step at a time. So let's start with all wheels pointing forward. When the accelerator pedal is pushed and the wheels start turning, each wheel acts as a propeller sucking water from under the car outwards, which produces sideways thrust. The direction in which water is sucked is shown using blue arrows, and the resultant thrust is shown by using yellow arrows. The thrust from the left front wheel pushes the car to the right, but the thrust from the right front wheel pushes left and cancels it. The same goes for the two rear wheels, so no matter how fast they spin, no progress will be made. Let's remain with a conventional setup, and imagine the driver now turns the front wheels to the left. The left front wheel pushes the car to the right, but also forward, and the right front wheel pushes the car to the left, but also backward. So turning the steering wheel changed nothing, and no matter how fast the wheels spin, no progress will be made. And here's where it gets interesting, because with independent steering for all four wheels, Cybertruck can turn the wheels independently. Imagine all wheels in a V direction as shown here. Although right and left movement remain zero, all wheels now provide forward movement, just like the left front wheel in the previous example. Nice, right? I guess you can now see why I said that having done my previous videos, I came up with this idea before Elon spilled the beans. Once you realize, like I did after doing my Cybertruck Technologies video, that Cybertruck will be able to steer each wheel independently of those others, it doesn't take a genius to realize that this enables to use turbine-shaped wheels as propellers. It's all very logical. In fact, I plan to release this as the next video in the series, but Elon's spilling the beans when I just started writing took away some of the novelty, so I moved on to other topics. Back to the engineering. And now that you get the idea of how it works, let's dig a little deeper into the details. Keeping the wheels submerged. Cybertruck's wheels will be kept submerged. While discussing paddle wheels, I said that the top part of the wheel must remain above the water if we want the wheel to provide any thrust. So if paddle wheels are used, then Cybertruck should compress the air suspension so the wheels are only partly submerged. Not so here. Only submerged parts of the wheel can provide meaningful propulsion. And since using turbine-shaped wheels as propellers is significantly more efficient than using the tires as paddles, Cybertruck's air suspension should keep wheels submerged. Besides providing more thrust, this also keeps the loads on the wheel constant, which aids wheel longevity. Actually, with Unter turbines, it's the wheel that should be submerged. While with paddle tires, it's the tire that should stick above the water. So to maximize propulsion, the suspension could theoretically keep the wheel fully submerged, but the part of the tire which is above the wheel sticking out. Reversing the flow. Remember that when describing turbine-shaped wheels, I said they produce an airflow to cool the brakes by sucking air from under the car outwards? Note that the brakes would be cooled as effectively if air was sucked in the opposite direction, from outside the wheels inward. However, adding more air under the car produces lift, which hurts the handling, while removing air from there produces downforce, so sucking air from under the car to the outside is always chosen. But just like with wet Nelly, while traveling in water, it is downforce that is your enemy while lift means less drag because a smaller portion of the truck will be submerged. So with Unter turbines, I expect the direction of flow to be reversed. Either Unter turbines will work the opposite way than Uber turbines and will funnel water from outside the wheel to the inside and under the car, or they'll work conventionally, but for water propulsion, the wheels will turn in reverse. Let's redo our diagram with this insight. With the wheels pointing forward, the balance of force is unchanged, with the right wheels canceling the force from the left ones. So just like before, there won't be any forward progress, but unlike before, high pressure water under the truck will lift it and help its buoyancy. Sucking the water inward also means that for forward propulsion, the wheels should be steered to a carrot shape instead of a V. As before, blue arrows show the direction that water is pushed, and yellow arrows show the resultant thrust. Rear wheel drive. While the diagrams I showed were for an all wheel drive Cybertruck, 
similar propulsion could be provided with rear-wheel drive cars. This could be more of a problem as with rear-wheel steering, the rear wheels have very limited steering angles compared to the front ones, which means they'll provide lower forward thrust compared to the front wheels. So progress will be slower, but yes, unless Tesla chooses otherwise, some amphibious propulsion could be possible in rear-wheel drive trucks even without fitting a propeller. Narrow bed between wheels. This brings me to an off-topic but interesting point. Recent Cybertruck measurements showed that the bed is as wide as an F-150s, but the wheel wells protrude deeper into it, leaving a narrower bed between the wheels. If you ever wondered why this is, the reason is rear-wheel steering. While Cybertruck could do with very small steering angles using narrow wheel wells, larger steering angles require wider wheel wells, which eat from the width of the bed. The recent measurements support my speculation that Cybertruck will enable relatively large rear wheel steering angles, which although still smaller than those that the front wheels can do, could be larger than the rear wheel angles usually provided on rear wheel steering trucks. I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you think. Do you believe that Cybertruck will safely float? If so, will you order Unter Turbine wheels for your Cybertruck? And even if completely safe, how long will it take until Consumer Reports produces a hit piece where they cause a Cybertruck to leak and drown? Let me know what you think. I'll soon make an engineering deep dive video on one of Tesla's breakthrough technologies. For a heads up when it's out, please subscribe and hit the bell button. And if you haven't watched yet my Cybertruck Technologies series, which went viral, a link will appear in just a few seconds. Also, consider supporting me on patreon.com slash connecting odots. Patrons make this channel possible, and hopefully once I get enough patrons, I'll be able to do this full time. A super thank you for the super thanks to Jeffrey O, Cristobal B, and Dave A. A huge shout out to my latest YouTube channel members, Fred B and Fred H, and to my latest patrons, Graham B, Jason D, Joe F, Johnny T, Lee Live, Marvin, Robert B, Ronnie E, Sahad B, and Walter R. And to all my patrons, you guys rock. Twitter is becoming the place to be, so I invite you to follow me there. I'm Connecting No Dots. I tweet several times a day with everything from long threads analyzing Tesla matters to making memes and hanging out with you guys. So, see you there. Until next time, I am connecting the dots, and you are amazing.